All right, one more time. Let's do this a little differently this time. I restarted the recording. I made a new one. Under Create, let's go to Create. Let's go to Free Image Plane. So this way you're making an image plane that's not attached to a camera. Doesn't really matter. I feel like this is a little bit more flexible. Hit Control A, go into the attributes of the free image plane, load in your banana. Reference. There you go. And again, you can move, scale, and rotate as needed. Just make sure it's not bisecting your model. Do you guys see this now? Am I full screen? Is everybody seeing what I'm doing? We can continue, right? Yes, I hope. Let's see. Yes, good. Much better. Excellent. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> all right, let's keep moving. Oh, like moving forward, there's a way that I can get the chat, I think, from Twitch on OBS. So I feel like for the next class, I'll work on trying to get a chat overlay maybe so I don't have to keep switching. I've seen that done before. I know it's possible. Eight, eight subdivisions on height. I think we had four on caps, right? So that's kind of the, the cylinder I'm working with, what I'm starting with. Then I rotate this 90 degrees, and you can start the rotation and then type in negative 90, like that. And that's fine. Scale out, or first, if you want to scale this direction and then this direction, maybe go to the front view. Make sure that you're getting kind of the rough scale of the thing. I hate the fact that it doesn't like to maximize. It's one of those things that really annoys me. So I'll go to panel, orthographic, front view. I'll sort of force the issue that way. I know my computer's really working right now because it's like 100% in my task manager. <laughs> um, all right, so back to X-Ray. And you could also, by the way, use soft select to bring the caps out, but why do that if your round cap is available? Click the one button for round cap and just readjust your, your scaling, right? Alternatively, you can use your soft select. And by using soft select, you can pull out the uh, sides of your banana. All right. So I was saying that you could do this two different ways. You could use soft select and like select some vertices, edges, or faces, and then just use soft select to kind of move and rotate this so move and rotate and that would be kind of one approach to this problem where i'm just kind of using soft select and that's okay there's nothing wrong with that but like i said i like to go over a few different ways to do things so another way to do things or in this case maybe i want to bend the whole banana have the object selected go to deform go to nonlinear bend deformer this is going to create a bend deformer inside the banana but it's going to exist as a line that goes straight through the thing, right? It's a little bit hard to see, but it is there. If I zoom in, you're going to see like there's a green line that goes right through the whole thing. From here, the curvature is going to be the attribute. As you change the curvature, it's going to bend both sides of the banana. See, um, right? So now it's going down versus up. If I type in a number, negative 5, negative 20, and so on, you can see it's bending both sides, right? So, and you can also slide it, but it's usually better to just type it in, negative 40, right? But now I have both sides of the banana being bent. Um, if you only want one side bent, you can change the bound. Sorry about that, that's something I need to fix, but low and high bound here, right? So if I zero out one of these, say low bound, that's gonna straighten out that side. So depending on which side you want straightened out, right? High bound, zero it out, it's gonna straighten out that side. So it's totally your call, whichever. Also, if you move the bend deformer through the object, you're gonna get some interesting deformations that way too. So the bend deformer actually works as you move, scale, and rotate it. So if I were to get the bend deformer basically where I want it, and you can always change this number, also, if you delete the history on the bend deformer, that's going to keep the shape. 
If you delete the Ben deformer, it goes back. So if you want to actually keep the shape, the deformation that's occurring, then you want to make sure to select the object, edit the uh, edit delete by type history. It's actually the shortcut is Alt Shift D to delete the history. And when, when you've done that, now you have a banana that, you know, um, is a little bit closer and is not dependent on the deformer. Right? So if the deformer was still there, it would still influence it. Um, again, if I delete the deformer, then, then it just goes back to its original shape. There are lots of de different deformers out there, by the way. So let's get the stem going here. If this is like the general shape of the banana, then we want to just go ahead and work with the stem at this point. Turn x-ray off. And now figure out, well, what are we going to do about this stem? Um, I'm sad to say that there's a giant N or star juncture here. So this is like right off the bat, not the best topology. <clears throat> if I chamfer this, I'm going to create a giant N-gon. And that's just sort of the price of doing business here. There's not really much you can do about it. Generally, we don't want to have giant N-gons. But sometimes, well, you just got to deal with what the cards give you. So if we go to Edit Mesh Chamfer Vertices, that's going to take that vertice there and create a massive N-gon out of it. Not great, but it'll be okay for extruding this stem, which is ultimately all I want to do. So I'll click the extrude button or control E, either one, and that's going to allow me to extrude the stem outwards like this. G is going to repeat the command, right? So now we have something like this. We can actually add divisions also that way. All right. B for soft select. If you want to use soft select, you can turn soft select on and then use this soft select to scale the stem outwards a little bit or again, rotate it as needed. Maybe go back to the front view. So orthographic front view. So now I can see, well, let's see, probably if I turn my soft select way up, like this, then it'll allow me to get this to match a little bit closer. And this is kind of like, well, we want that shape to sort of stop there. So maybe instead of using soft select or just use a very low influence. So pull back on your influence. That way you're only going to influence the stem at the top here. See? So then you can move scale and rotate that. And that's basically the main parts of this, but I'm just going to keep kind of um, using a little soft select here to get this to match my reference a little better. So select this edge loop. It's a little hard to select. Let's get into edge mode or even vertex mode. It doesn't matter. So if there's something that's kind of hard to select, use your lasso selection over here. Select with lasso around the edge loop or around the vertices, hit B for soft, select, and just kind of work from here. Again, lasso the vertices that you want to affect. And just simply move the shapes around or scale as necessary. Always you want to hit that three button, right? So hit the three button and just say, okay, is that close to what I'm after, right? So hit F8 for object mode, three button. You know, we're getting pretty close. Um, you might want to add another edge loop towards the top because this sort of uh, weird triangular problem is always going to give you these ridges. You know? So we always have that with a lot of triangles at the top. This is why we don't like triangles. If we use our insert edge loop as usual, 
this is the solution to this problem. And depending on how close the edge loop is to the top, you know, you'll get a pretty good ridge there. So speaking of ridges, um, bananas actually do typically have these kind of ridges that get pinched together a little bit, right? So this is kind of where I wish I had a three button mouse because it would come in really handy right now. Um, I'm tempted to just put the battery in my mouse to fix this problem. But let's just at least talk about how you would make these ridges, even if I, this is where having a three button mouse is really important. Um, wherever I would want a ridge, I would want to basically slide the edge loops together. <clears throat> so if I were to select a partial edge loop, it doesn't go all the way up to the stem, but just sort of down the middle of the banana, we'd want to use the slide edge command. So for the record, that is a command Oops, do this last edge here. It's a little bit hard to select. So sometimes if you go into wireframe mode, it can be easier, sometimes. Or I can just fight with it. <laughs> Hit the one button, there we go. Now it's been selected. So we have this like partial edge loop Oops, F for fit. Um, so the slide edge command is gonna be shift right click. We have a slide edge tool right here. So that would be great if I had a middle click because this is where having a middle click is absolutely important in order for this slide function to work. Um, but since I don't, <laughs> I kind of have to fake it by using move and whoa, see I accidentally have this selected down here. So make sure you don't have extra edges you didn't mean to select. Hit the four button and kind of like rotate around. Okay, that was just an accident. So now move one edge loop closer to the other, like that. And this is again is something you should really use slide for. Um, faking it like this is not particularly good. And I'm gonna create kind of an ed a ridge in my banana if I'm not careful. So this is a perfect example of where you should be using slide and having a three button mouse is where this comes in handy. Um, if you take the other edge loop that's next, next to it on the other side and the same thing, you'd want to slide it. And if you have three edge loops that are basically close together, you're guaranteed that you're going to kind of preserve that shape. So if I take, this edge loop, now I have kind of three that I've, again, this is where your slide function is going to work much better than trying to cheat it with the move. So this is again, slide, have your, you know, have your three button mouse, use the slide function, don't try to fake it, because you might end up making like weird ridges as opposed to the ones that you're really after. But let's just check this and see what happens with the F8 for object mode, hit the three button, kind of rotate around it. You can see where this corner didn't turn out very well. So again, this is kind of where slide would be would be better. Um, I guess if you don't have a three button mouse, like I right now don't have one, then just be really careful, maybe when you're squeezing these edge loops together, right? but try to use the slide function, do it, do it properly. Um, so that's basically the modeling of a banana. Um, you'd probably want to do the same thing on the, any side that you saw those ridges. Oh God. But now you have a banana with a ridge in it, as you can see. Um, all right, before I move on to like doing something else like a bowl or a plate, um, who's got questions? Anybody at all? Other than giggling over the fact that I modeled a banana, because how old are we? Um, any other questions? No? All right, cool. Um, if I'm going to bring this into my scene, right? Like, say this is something I want to bring into the other scene. Um, I actually don't like how those edges went together. So I'm going to undo that. And I really want to say, have a three button mouse so you don't have that same pain that I just went through. 
But say if we want to export this into another Maya scene, you could save it as a Maya ASCII file, or you could save it as an OBJ or FBX. It doesn't really matter, but you can always drag and drop into the scene that you're working on. I feel like we have a little bit of time, so maybe I'll do a, um, an apple. Or no, or does anybody care? <laughs> or does somebody want to do a pear? I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe pear is better. Does anybody have an opinion? Pear or apple on the chat? Anyone at all? I'm going to do an apple. <laughs> Say something, otherwise it's going to be an apple. No, nobody cares. You can speak up too. Nobody has opinions. <laughs> um, apples are really easy for the record, by the way. So are pears. All right. I don't see my chat updating, so I'm just going to go. I'm going to just power through here. Just keep going. So apple reference, same thing. By the way, the way that you would make an apple is the same way you would also make a pear. So... Um, sort of these same things apply. Um, if I want to save this as banana.ma, like I said, I can then merge that into my other scene. Really quick, same thing. Um, you know what? Let's do this in the scene. Just make this a little bit different than the last one. So I will go ahead and start with that banana scene or rather the, uh, the earlier fruit bowl scene, rather. I think that's not a bad idea. Why not? Let's just do this a little bit different, just to make it interesting. So group your stuff together. Select the candles, hit control G, call this candles, right? Um, this is gonna be my room. So I model the room. Um, obviously, you could also have a cyclorama. I made my table one object, that's fine for now. Whoops. If that happens, you can always delete the history. Alt, shift D, that deletes the history. No big deal. Just organizing my outliner here so I know everything that's here. We'll probably delete these end cloth nodes and so on. So in this case, I'm going to make the apple kind of in the scene as opposed to it being in a separate scene. I can take everything in the scene and hit H for hide temporarily. It's easy enough. Um, even the cyclorama here, H for hide. So same thing. It's easy enough to bring it back. If you don't know this, by the way, take note under display. You can go to display, show all. So if you've hidden a bunch of stuff and you don't realize it and you lost count what you hid, what you didn't, I mean, whatever it was, then just click show all and it all comes back. So that's pretty nice in case you forget what you've hidden and what you haven't. All right. Um, also, if you want to unhide, it's shift H, but you need to do that with the object selected. So just remember hide and unhide H and shift H. Make sure you have something selected when that happens. So same as before, create image plane or free image plane, right? Control A for the attributes. Go to the image name folder. Put in your apple. You could just as well make an image plane that's attached to your front or side camera. I think you get a little more flexibility by using this free image plane, but like I keep saying, you could just as well do it here. View image plane. Either way, doesn't matter. Okay, so now I have my reference. Start with a sphere because I think we can all agree an apple looks most like a sphere. Start off as low as possible. One of your rules is to start off with the lowest poly count you can and still get away with it. So let's say eight and eight. Super low poly. And we could even 
maybe click the to button to sort of see what it looks like, right? So then from here, we want to make this a little bit irregular. We can start to figure out, well, how do I make this irregular? Select your edge loop, double click, hit B for soft select again. Hold down B and drag. And then this way we can just kind of use our edge loops to model this apple, right? So scale outward like that. Maybe rotate slightly. And don't be afraid to also use your x-ray under shading x-ray. So move scale and rotate until you're, you're pretty close there. Um, you don't always have to model in that view. Oh boy, why is it black? I don't know. Looks like my normals got reversed somehow. So under mesh display, reverse. Or, or, actually, in this case, it's not the normals, but rather I'm in the light mode. So remember, four is wireframe, five is shaded, see, and seven is lighting. If you don't have a light in your scene, then everything's just going to appear black. So it may not be your normals being flipped. It may be that you're in seven mode. So be aware of that. So the five button. Now I take the vertice in the center. Again, using soft select, bring your soft select down, move the vertice in the center down, right? Um, and it might actually help you to have both views open. You can even, if you'd like, move this bar up like this. So I'm basically just showing two views. Now it's my front view, and now I can change this panel to be perspective also. So that's easy enough if you want to have the two views up. So then just use soft select with your edge loops. To kind of move scale rotate. Until you've got something that's a little irregular. Like that. You know? Far from a perfect sphere. Hit the three button, of course. So, pretty easy. Just a lumpy sphere, really. It's not hard at all. And it's pretty damn close to the original. Because organic forms like this are meant to be irregular, don't be afraid in the, sec in the two or three mode to just pull some vertices out. It's okay to make it a little bit lumpy bumpy because I mean, after all, pears and apples are not perfect spheres by any means. All right, now I can just make the, the stem. <clears throat> Do you guys want me to make the leaf? Is that like a thing that you guys want me to make? Because I can if you'd like me to. I don't know, I don't hear anybody saying anything. So. You can speak up, by the way. I can hear you still. <laughs> or maybe I'll just check the chat. Maybe I should just do that. Well, I don't see anything in the chat, so maybe I'm, uh... <laughs> I don't see anything in the chat. Okay. Honestly, I, I think I might just use paint effects to generate the leaves at this point, but I could model it by hand. It would be a lot more time consuming that way. So it depends. You have to ask yourself, like, what's fast to model? The stem is pretty easy and fast to model. And that, I think, is fine. Like, I can vertex snap the stem to the center here of the apple. And then, again, it's basically a cylinder. So if you're just kind of using this technique of starting with a primitive, um, and then modeling with edge loops, which is kind of what we've gone over thus far in class, then this stuff should all be pretty easy. Now what's not easy is maybe um, that leaf. That leaf is uh, maybe not quite that easy, right? So hit the three button, right? 
always check it with the three button. And like I was saying, when you bend the stem, like how do you want to bend the stem, right? Do you want to use soft select or do you want to bend, use a bend deformer? It's totally up to you. I've gone over both. I think for right now, soft select's easier for me, but really it's up to you. If you want to use a bend deformer, you can. Um, but then you got to mess with the deformers, high and low bounds and all that good stuff. I, I'm just finding soft select to be just a little faster. But really, it's just about what's fast for you, right? So if you feel like you work faster with a bend deformer, then by all means do that. Um, I'm kind of using soft select right now to try to get this dimple underneath the stem, pull it down a little bit more this way. That's about it, really. Let's make sure that this guy is... Yeah, not too bad. All right, so an apple and a banana, right? Group this stuff together. Wait, I never got out of you about the leaf. Yes or no, leaf, anybody? Control G for grouping. Group it together, make an apple. Like that. So, still no, no questions or comments. Um, if you're done with the image plane, you can either hide it or delete it. H, of course, is hide. If you've got multiple image planes, you can always um, group them together. Let's unhide everything. And I'll just go ahead and make a bowl to put this banana and apple in. Also, I think I have a few too many candles. So again, I can either hide or delete. H is hide. Just hide for now. So cool trick. If you want to go up in your hierarchy, if you select a child in the hierarchy, and I want to go up to the apple group, like say I just select the stem, if I click the up arrow key, that will actually go up to select the entire group. So that might be useful for you if you're trying to select groups and it's like, well, I've only got this part of the apple selected, but not the stem. Just press the up arrow key and now you've got the whole group selected over here. And in that way I can scale it. So one of your homework assignments was actually to find some photo reference. So it's at this point that you should basically be looking at your photo reference because you're not going to be able to know what the scale of this apple should really be next to these candles, for example, unless you have some kind of photo reference. Main reason that we're using photo reference is not just texturing and modeling, but also for scale. So right now, I kind of have to guess at how big this apple should be. And I shouldn't be guessing at all. I should just simply have photo reference. So there's no guesswork involved. Um, all right. Let's make a let's make a bowl for this to go in. Maybe a plate because it's super easy and simple. Um, we've been using primitives to model with, right? So it's easy enough. If you're going to make a plate, just to add additional edge loops where you need them. Under the input stack, you can do it here, of course. Or if you want to add edge loops manually, that's another option. So I'm going to say four and four. Kind of scale the plate out, flatten it. Right. And so if I wanted a sort of a ridge on my plate here, I could extrude these faces. F11 for face mode, or if you're one of those right-click people, I don't care. I just use my F keys. So double-click to get that loop of faces and extrude upwards a little bit, just with the blue arrow. Then I can kind of get that lip around the plate. And in terms of how deep you want the plate to be. Of course, you can hit the three button, right? And that already shows you a preview of it. But maybe you, you know, there's your plate, but maybe you want it to not be quite so flat. Maybe you want a little bit of depth, just a little bit. So, 
select the vertices in the center, but this is rather important. Um, go into wireframe mode when you do it because you actually want to select the vertices on the top and the bottom. Now when you use soft select, it will affect the bottom and top of the plate or dish, I guess you could say. So now when I push down and I give it some depth, like that, you can kind of see what's happening. So this is a perfect diagonal right now. It might not be what you want. Remember, if you go into your soft select, double click any of your toolbar icons, go into soft select, you can change this fall off because right now you're getting this kind of direct um, angle, I guess you could say, where it's there's not really any fall off to speak of. It doesn't really look good. But if you go into soft select here and click the very first icon, then you get a different kind of fall off. You could even change this if you wanted to and even make it more pronounced. So you can adjust this however you'd like. So what we're seeing is we're getting the opposite result of what we want, right? So then push this up like this. There we go. And now you can see the bottom of the plate looks correct. It's following this profile. I'm giving it a little bit of depth. Hit F8, check it out in your like kind of smooth mode and decide if you like it. And I mean, you can always model it a little bit more. By the way, if the grid is getting in your way, because it's annoying the crap out of me right now, I can go to show and all the way at the bottom of show, turn off your grid if it's annoying you. So now put this on the bowl. Remember, or excuse me, put it on the table, what I'm trying to say. Um, we don't want it to pass through the table and we don't want it to float. So this is kind of one of those things where um, if we look, we can see, oh, that's definitely passing through my table. So push it up a little bit. It's generally really, really bad if you have floating objects because you can tell from the shadow. Like this apple is definitely floating above this, this plate. So the best way to fix these kinds of problems is to just check your orthogonal angles, your orthogonal views, right? So if by looking in the front and side view, you can see that objects are floating. Like I can totally see, oh God, look at the candle. Candles are very much floating. Right, so this is a good reason why you would want to check your front and side views. Don't neglect that. We don't want any floating objects. So check your front or side views. Hit F for fit. This is where your, whoop, see? This is where your wireframe comes in really handy. Hit the four button. You can see what objects are floating. So now I can take all the candles. In fact, I can take the whole group and kind of set them on the table because I don't want floating candles any more than I want a floating apple. Hit F for fit. If it helps you to turn on x-ray, that's another option. Mm, I think in this case, it's just better to check in multiple views. So in this case, whether it's wireframe or x-ray, I can actually see the candles still need to go down a touch, just a little bit. There we go. But yeah, check your multiple views. So check your your front, your side view, and your perspective view, and ask yourself if these objects are passing through each other or what. Do we need additional edge loops? If I go to Mesh Tools, Insert Edge Loop, right? And I make a new edge loop, say right here. I mean, ask yourself that. Is that something that you want to define the, the plate ridge a little bit better? Of course, add some additional edge loops. Hit the three button. Stop me if you guys have questions. Should we import the banana in? Why not? Let's do that. File, import. You're probably like, well, I thought you said it was going to be a fruit bowl, not a fruit plate. Yeah, that's true. So you can drag and drop another Maya file into this, or you can just import it. Either way, same thing happens. There's my banana right? I don't need this image plane. Again, I can either hide it or delete it. There's the banana. Scale it down. Remember, 
V for vertex snapping, you can easily snap it to the bolt. Make sure the objects aren't passing through each other and check your scale. And again, this is especially where hopefully you did your homework and you have um, <clears throat> you have uh, some photo reference of how large the banana versus the apple versus the candle should be. Because that's kind of where I am with this demo right now is I need to go and look at my photo reference. If you don't have photo reference, then it's going to be really hard to figure out what the scale of your objects should be, right? So this is again where your photo reference really comes in handy. These candles look huge, for example, right? So probably the candles are too large compared to the banana and apple, I would say. So, but back to my original point, you need reference for this stuff, right? So if you don't have reference, you're just guessing, and that's never a good thing to do. Always have some reference. Okay, so last thing is the bowl, and then I'm going to just stop because I feel like I've gone over a bit. I was thinking maybe the wine glass, but we'll save that one for later. Okay, so how would I make a bowl? Easiest way to make a bowl, I think. Start with a sphere, <clears throat> and then with the sphere here, maybe give it eight, or again, or 10 divisions. We'll say eight, because it's always good to stay low, right? Lower is typically better, especially when making video games. We'll chop off the top of the sphere. Just delete the faces here. And then from here, scale it and extrude it. So scale the bowl. Maybe you want to flatten it out a little bit. And then extrude it for thickness. Using local translate Z to give it some thickness. Don't go this way because your normals will be inverted if it turns black. Go this way. There we go. And now always hit the three button. You're going to see immediately when I hit the three button that the rim or the ridge of the bowl is going to be way too sharp. So this is what I mean about bevel your edges or more to the point, add insert edge loops. So then add your insert edge loops, slide towards the top of the bowl, hit the three button to check. It's looking a little bit better. You want to do that again, but slide really close to the top. Like that. And then again, hit that three button. There we go. Now you're going to see a defined sort of thickness for the bowl. Remember, you can also click poly smooth. The three button is going to give you an approximation of that. So that looks pretty nice. And then decide do you want your fruit in a bowl or a plate? I don't really care. I'll leave that up to you. Just make sure there's nothing floating and there's nothing passing through the table. So like I said, best way to do this probably is to check your different views. Right? So I, oh, you can see the banana is definitely passing through the plate. Rotate it. Generally speaking, um, if you have to choose between if something is floating versus if something's passing through, you can see my candles are just barely passing through. I would err on the side of, I would rather see an object pass through a surface by a very small margin versus seeing that object floating, which is just a dead giveaway, right? I'm going to extrude the top of this banana one more time and then scale it in by the center. Whoop, not that much, just like that much. So that when I hit the three button, it looks a little bit better. All right, so I've got a plate. I've got a banana. I've got an apple. I've got a bowl. Who's got questions for me? We already did the tablecloth. Anybody have questions or can I stop the stream? Or do you have questions? Do something, let's do something fun. I'm not ready to stop this quite yet. I've got five minutes till three. Let's do something else. So um, this is rather boring, right? Um, I can put some additional stuff in the scene to make it more interesting, but I don't necessarily want to model everything all the time because that's very time consuming. So if I go to my content browser under window, general editor, content browser. I have, an, I have this huge 
sort of list of paint effects here in this folder. So we go to the paint effects folder under examples, paint effects. Scroll down towards the bottom. I have a lot of different things to pick from here, like all kinds of stuff. Um, so if you're a digital painter, I have watercolor and oils. If you just straight up want to paint digitally in Maya, you can do that. But we also have different meshes that can also be just painted straight down. There's some tree meshes here. There's some trees, different plants. So under, let's see, where is this? Uh, yeah, under plant mesh, for example, there's a rubber potted plant here. So if I double click this, that's going to load the brush. You're going to see at the bottom of the toolbar that the brush is loaded. Now, let's just say in the corner of the room, there's a potted plant. Yeah, I know, not the most like creative thing in the world, but we can do this very easily. If I hold down B, left click and drag, that's my brush size. It's very sensitive. So when I click and drag, that's a huge potted plant. I didn't have to model it. So hold down B, make your brush size a bit smaller, and then make the potted plant kind of at, a, at the scale that makes sense. And again, this is why having photo reference is nice because you don't have to wonder about what your scale should be. But just hold down the B button and drag to make a smaller brush. Now everybody should see at this point that the plant was just sort of floating in space right now. And that's not what we want, right? And you guys with your camera off or staring at your phone, it would be great if you turn your cameras on and for those people with your cameras on, don't stare at your phone. I'm almost done with the stream. Thanks. Um, if I select the room here, I go to generate and I say make paintable. Now my paint effects should stick to this room. I'll go back, make the potted plant one more time. You can see I can make as many as I want, but note that now it's sticking to the room that I've created, right? So once I have the scale that I like, I know that it's sticking to, to the room. All I have to do now is convert this to polygons. Under modify, convert paint effects to polygons. And now I actually have this as something that will render. I can easily move it around. Don't forget center pivot, modify center pivot, or if you made a button for it, either way. But now it's easy enough to like move scale and rotate this potted plant. Maybe I want it like in the corner of the room or something. Um, I don't know. Point is, is this is where your photo reference comes in. So there you go. Um, I think that's going to be enough for right now. I went over paint effects and I went over modeling an apple and a, and a banana. Um, I'm going to check the chat here for questions. You guys don't have any questions for me at all? No? All right. Well, then I'm going to stop the stream. So again, banana, apple, plate, bowl, paint effects. I'd say you have a lot to, to go through there. So.